G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in over on the southeast side of the map. We've got Vortex playing on the Chinese and Litacore over on the other side of the map. Who have we got? We got the Muslim playing as the English. Vortex will be using the Chinese somewhat surprisingly over here. A civilization that's very, very good for slower paced, more defensive maps. The problem here for Vortex is that English might be the single best civilization on this map. The two players spawning rather close so that... Lack of mobility for the English army isn't really going to show, but their brute force push with their longbow mass could. Yeah, this is one of the very concerning things for China on this map is that typically, you know, you would expect China would be very strong on a map which is closed off. Vortex opting for China on an open map and not just an open map. I mean, it, it's open within the context of, you know, fighting against your opponent. Obviously, it's very closed off towards the, the extremities of the map. The sides of the map are, are a lot more difficult to... To sort of navigate but it's it's very curious that this is the decision he's going for so do you think we might potentially see some sort of who knows walling out of vortex potentially i would definitely think that he needs to do that although his map is not really suitable for walling so if you compare his map to the muslims ones the muslim has an easy wall off on the front of his base the sides are a little more difficult to protect but in general he's got some straightforward walls to make that at least limits the movement of his opponent whereas for vortex he's kind of far away from those rocks his forests aren't really positioned well so it's going to be difficult for him to wall off the entire front of his base yeah he's got some big walls to make that is for sure there's definitely you know if he was playing against the french i'd be thinking yeah he's not doesn't have terrible spawn he can like wall off back here behind his trees do a little bit of a wall out here over on the front of his berries. But against the English Litacor, that's going to be really difficult. It is going to be so tough playing on this map in with this spawn against the English. It is just, yeah, it doesn't look good for him. You know, before this game, I said that I think his chances uh, of winning this game are probably at like 2% chance. That's that's Vortex's chance uh, going, because obviously this is a home map for the Muslim. Uh, playing on Altai as the English, he gets a very happy, um, a very happy matchup there. But yeah, it's it's going to be tough to to for him to to, I mean, do anything really. Yeah, it it is going to be difficult to do. Although I'm told that in the Viper versus Vortex set, we actually had the the same civilization matchup for Vortex, and he was able to pull that one off. So really, he might have something up his sleeve over here. And we have to mention that. The quarterfinals, semifinals, and grand finals are played right after each other. There is no time for the players to watch their mm. potential opponents' matches unless they finish their own set very, very fast, which was not the case for the Muslim. He actually was the player in the semifinals that finished the last, I do believe. So, because of that, he didn't have any chance to look at Vortex's previous sets. So, he's sort of going into this one blind. He doesn't know if Vortex has something up his sleeve over here that he's unaware of. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, Vortex's brother is Lucifron. Uh, these two are very close, obviously, both Spanish players. Have we got ourselves... Look at this Barbican placement going to be coming down right here. Look at this. This is a very forward Barbican that may potentially be coming down right here. It's a good spot right in front of the gold. Going to be keeping that safe. Oh, we're going to see a fast castle. We are going to see ourselves a fast castle, I suspect. Uh, at least I, I suspect that's what we're going to see. We've got a lot of villages on wood. Um, ideally, you, you wouldn't really... Not ideally, but normally you wouldn't need to keep this gold safe. Uh, you'd be very happy to play into um, in, into the... the um, sorry, into the English without having the, the gold. Uh, but the fact that he's putting the Barbican on top of the gold and in front of the gold, getting the walls off to the side, to me indicates that he, he's probably interested in going for a fast castle of some sort, or at least getting up as quickly as possible. Now, it's worth noting that that is the only save gold that he has, if you can call that save. There's absolutely no gold mines available at the back of his base, <laughs> and that could have serious consequences. If he loses control over that hill, that could be disaster. So the Barbican of the Sun is almost a must-have in front of that gold mine. Otherwise, the first couple of longbows cut him off from gold forever. Yeah, one of the things to note, though, Demuslim not particularly doing a good job of scouting out his opponent. Now, when I say good job, that's with the caveat, in that he might not be interested in scouting out his opponent. Um, so, yeah, you can you can see that typically um, Chinese, uh, or at least the um, the English want to scout out the Chinese in the early game because they want to find the resources that they can look to begin isolating uh, or preventing the gathering of. Uh, but that hasn't happened yet. So we may see a potential timing coming out here. The Muslim is slowly beginning to trickle out these uh, longbows. So he is going to be looking to apply pressure. 
Keep in mind, the reason why the English are so good on our type as well is because the map is, it goes up in the center of the map and then it comes down. So you've got these hills uh, that are in the middle and then it comes down towards the bases of the players. So English love to get these longbows out onto the map, begin having this early pressure and it gives them that extra line of sight bonus that they can apply nice early offensive uh, pressure with. Ovos coming in here for Vorix. So it's going to be difficult for those longbows to break in here. He's got one safe woodland at the back, the berries, and in general, the food economy is safe. The gold mine is safe behind that Barbican of the Sun. So it's going to be difficult for the Muslim to do damage without rams over here. I wonder if he's gonna go for that early blacksmith after he realizes that uh, he's gonna bump into Vos unless he grabs some rams. Yeah, that could be the case. Uh, but noting this archery range is down and looking at the macro, we may potentially have a fast dynasty into Chokunu coming in here. Uh, at least that that's my current thought process. He's got three villages on gold, which is quite a lot of villages to have at six minutes into the game. Um, but it should be more than enough to sustain Chokunu production uh, with Imperial officials. He does have the one Imperial official out. So we'll have to see whether he looks to be placing down that second landmark. It looks like he's going to be putting it down any second now. And that landmark is going to be very, very nice because it is going to cover the wood line and the mill as well. So both of those will be boosted. It looks like we're also going to have a couple of archers coming out here right at the start. So Vorix for now is playing this one safe. And for the Muslim, there is still no reaction to those Vos right now. He's got those longbows out here, but he wasn't really able to do much with them because he's bumping into Vos everywhere. He tried to get a tower be behind that wood line, but... That's not really going to do anything because that wood line isn't really being used. Yeah, and again, he spots out this this wood line. And I, I think at this point, you sort of got to be wondering exactly what the Muslim's looking to achieve. Obviously, he has played this matchup before. He's one of the best players in the game at the moment. So he, he knows uh, what his game plan is. Uh, I'm, I'm suspecting that we may see uh, that, that ram timing that you mentioned earlier. We have a villager that's now just slowly gathering up on gold. And he's going to be putting a second villager on gold as well. So... Probably going to have a blacksmith going down within the next 60 seconds um, and uh, and potentially looking in towards that siege engineering. He kind of needs to because he's committed towards the long woman pressure. His opponent is massing quite a lot of archers. Now is in Song Dynasty and it looks like we're not getting a single Chukonu out just yet. Instead, Vorix is going for a second town center. So he is basically going Dynasty first and then going for a second town center. Oof. That way he has access to the Chukonu. Look, that is very, very, uh, very, very dangerous. I would say a play against the English. This is an incredibly greedy build. Do you think he's going for a second town center? I I've got a feeling he's not going for a second town center. I've got a feeling he might be looking to stone, uh, do stone walls with, um, with uh, the outposts, uh, the the stone wall outposts. Just, just because uh, I don't. The, the, the issue that I'm, I'm having here and that I'm trying to reconcile with is he knows his enemy's on one town center and he knows his enemy is going to be on one town center for the entire early game. He actually spots out the blacksmith, by the way, from his opponent. So he knows this timing is going to be happening. Um, and by going Song Dynasty, he's already out echoing his opponent because of the increased or the, rather the reduced villager train time. But then if he was to throw down a second town center, like he would just be going absolutely insane right there. So... It, it, I think it makes a lot of sense for him to be doing what he's doing. And, uh, yeah, potentially we might see stone walls coming out soon. Uh, it is uh, possible. He actually sent over all the stone miners to Wood, and he doesn't have the stone he needs for that uh, second town center. So, as you said, it might actually be stone wall defenses. He still has the stone dynasty, so he's got the faster training speed of villagers on that town center. But now he's sending villagers back to stone. And considering that he went all out on the Wood department, after getting to 200 stone, makes me feel like he wanted to go for a second TC and he was like, okay, I got the stone and now send all my villagers on wood. But then he realized he doesn't actually have the stone. The Muslim, however, is not going to go for a very aggressive feudal age push over here. He's not even getting the siege engineering, he's just getting steel arrow. Instead, he looks to be going up to castle age, which might be a decent option here. Because it takes some time to get that ramp push going, might as well go to castle age. If your opponent is seemingly booming, you might just go into Castle Age with the King's Palace yourself, or you could potentially get the White Tower up in the middle of the map and give you a lot of map control. Yeah. Uh, scout going to be going down towards the base of uh, of the Muslim. Uh, so Vortex's scout no longer going to be providing that intel. And we do have that siege engineering technology going to be coming in. Now, obviously, that scout would have spotted the heavy gold miners out over towards that gold mine. So I'm curious as to what we actually see come out for the uh, fort. Uh, De Muslim, but yeah, look, you know, earlier in the game, I, I said, you know, I, I would give 
uh, Vortex, you know, a 2% chance of winning. Uh, slowly but steadily, he's increasing those odds. You know, uh, if you've ever watched Dota 2, you would have seen they've got this AI that determines, you know, which, which team is more likely to win based on a number of different factors. I feel like, you know, right now, the Muslim has sort of he, he's lost a little bit of weight. He's gone up from... from he was on 98%. Now he's down to like 90% victory. Second down center coming in here for Vortex. There is Siege Engineering though. I really feel like if you're playing uh, the English right now, you're floating so much food and gold, might as well go into Castle Age. You could justify going for a ramp push right now, but you should either commit to the ramp push entirely in Fuel Age or pile up resources, but then go towards Castle Age. Looks like Vortex wanted to flank with the archers and this will be spotted by the Muslim. And that should be a decisive victory for our red player here. Yeah, the Muslim looking pretty good. Gonna be able to pick off at least four of those archers. They try their best to get back. He's got a couple of wall segments that he's trying to place up and secure this gold mine and deer uh, down towards the south of the map. But uh, now gonna be falling back. I don't think he's gonna be able to get at least that first section of wall up. He's gonna try his best now. Doesn't look like there's any way through this large, um, this large uh, mountain range up towards the north. But if a couple of longbows were to get up there, I suspect they could be beginning to rain terror down upon the villages below them. That exact, that is exactly what you want to do. Get two or three longbows up on top of that hill because you want to deny those berries as much as possible. King's Palace on the way for the Muslim as his H3 landmark, and this is where you have to start turning up the heat and start pushing that Chinese player because. Don't forget, this is a 2-down center Song Dynasty boom, so soon Vortex's economy is going to start kicking in. We're talking about 39 villagers versus 48, so or the 9 vales lead, and Vortex is getting close to Castle Age as well. Yeah, and it's only going to continue to increase uh, for the duration of the, day, the game, because obviously he's on two town centers, and the Muslim is going to be on that second town center uh, once this King's Palace is finished, but it's important to note that the difference here is the Song Dynasty, and we've talked about this before, villager production time is reduced by 35%, so quite significant. But now down towards the south, that ram beginning to attack the gate of Vortex, and uh, Vortex's villagers going to be having to uh, vacate the area before his enemy becomes victorious. Notice how the Muslim is using one scout on the right side of Vortex's base. He wants to see if Vortex is moving out, especially towards that hunt. Currently, Vortex's army is not bad, and he's rushing up an emergency vol over here, trying to slow down this push as much as possible, because he's getting that astronomical clock tower up, and we're probably going to see one or two nest of beasts coming in here rather soon. Yeah, both players now hitting the next age. Astronomical clock tower has finished, and uh, it is on top of the Imperial Academy. So a lot of players will make the mistake of dropping down the Imperial Academy, but then not putting their uh, astronomical clock tower next to it. It's really important to make sure that it's it's on top of it because it's going to be buffing up that one. But uh, yeah, we could potentially be seeing Nesta Bees through shortly. But when it comes to upgrades that we're uh, seeing, no real upgrades coming through just yet uh, from the Blacksmith at this stage. Uh, and no, uh, no veterancy coming through for any of the units either. Yeah, here the problem for the Muslim here is that his push is just slow. Like, he's slowly grinding down those walls, but Vortex is able to buy himself some time. It is a quite greedy strategy to play on this map, but I have to give credit to Vortex for his base layout. Yeah. The way that his base looked like in Feudal Age was exceptional. Mm -hmm. The walls, the Barbican of the Sun were positioned perfectly. Just keep those longbows out. It was a very difficult base to fall off because it had a lot of open space on the right and the north. But he was able to place his buildings in a way that he just basically prevented the Muslim from doing any damage in Feudal Age, and it's all about buying yourself that time you need for that Chinese economy to kick in, and that Castle Age to come in with that uh, astronomical clock tower. Yeah, I, I gotta agree with you 100%. He did a great job with his base layout. It is an absolutely beautiful base. Uh, and, and those walls were just impeccable. But now, speaking of impeccable, it looks like those battering rams are finally going to be taking a little bit of damage as they do push in towards this village. It looks like it's probably going to have some archers opening up on them very, very shortly. Uh, but uh, this village is going to be going down. Uh, now, one thing to note, these villages, even though they look juicy, they're only 100 wood. It's not like a, it's not a particularly uh, impressive victory that he is having down here towards the south. Nest of Beasts setting up right now. The Muslim doesn't really have anything to fight against those. On the other hand, the Jukenu <laughs> and the Archers don't have the castage upgrades yet, so the Longbows can pick them apart from distance. Couple of Palace Guards hitting the field, but the Muslim will need something against those Nest of Beasts very soon. Otherwise, he will just once again stall out with the push. And even though he's on two town centers too, it is Song Dynasty versus no Song Dynasty, so every 40 seconds we get... Uh, 
two villagers advantage for the Chinese player. Yeah, it builds up very, very quickly. And obviously, when you extrapolate that over, say, four minutes or eight minutes, it really starts to build up to a, uh, a, a big lead. But yeah, now we've got the Chinese player really coming online. Uh, the win rate percent is continuing to increase. You know, I mentioned earlier, 98%. It's, it came down to 90% for the Muslim. Now it's not looking so pretty. Now it's down to around that 75% mark, I've got to say. The Muslim is adding in that siege workshop, so he's doing the right thing to look to counter those nest of bees. But I, I really got to say, Vortex's Chinese is incredibly impressive. He is impressive, and it's weird that you're saying 75%, because now I feel like the chances of uh, the Muslim are dropping to something like 10-15%, simply because the deeper we go into this game, the better and better that Chinese unit composition will be. Mm. And we shouldn't underestimate the fact that we're already looking at the 17 villagers gap. Unit composition starting to be well set up for Vortex. He's gonna have some Jugenu, some Palace Guard, some Nest of Beasts coming in. And currently the biggest problem for the Muslim is that he's behind in economy, but he's also unable to push. So at this point, everything is set for Vortex to take this game into Imperial. And Imperial Age, the Chinese, is one of the strongest civs out there. What I would love to see from the Muslim actually is stonewalling off the sacred sites on both sides and then just going in for a keep in the middle and taking that sacred site saying okay you're camping in your base i might as well take the sites and force you out uh, i agree with everything that you said except for that percentage number and the reason why is because of exactly what the muslim's doing men at arms have a look at the the numbers that are on these bad boys so keep in mind that the chinese unique men at arm the palace guard has got reduced armor uh, and at the, the consequence, or, or as a reward, it gets more speed. But the English, obviously it has a Men at Arms, but in addition to that, it's got a, an upgrade called Clad Armor, which is also known by many in the competitive circles as Chad Armor. And the reason why is because it actually turns your Men at Arms into absolute Chads. And the problem that, um, that Vortex is going to have is that if the Muslim is going to be able to push in with Chads, and longbows and at the same time have springords on the back line that are doing damage and killing these nest of bees he's not going to have any way that he can actually deal with these so we'll have to see how the game unfolds and whether the chads are going to be over to or able to overcome their uh, opponents it is an option it is indeed an option marine lord versus beastie qt had the same matchup on altai in one of their games it was actually a one and a half hour long game that we have seen <laughs> and in the end the chinese won that so i agree with you if there is all those components longbows men at arms spring goals out there that is something that the muslim can carve out a victory with i feel like the key question here is timing that takes a lot of time to build that army up he already has a decent amount of men at arms some longbows out some mangonels as well and it looks like he's about to push in i feel like the bigger question here is not going to be unit composition it's going to be gold control because Vortex's gold is dangerously exposed here, and we talked about that before. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. And it's right at the front of his base. He's going to be trying his best to hold on. Three Nest of Bees actually managing to come out right now for Vortex. We'll try and get a, a nice angle there. And uh, he's going to be falling back. He does have the Springlords. Keep that in mind, but he doesn't have the line of sight. He's not going to be able to look up those hills. And that's got, what's going to make the army so difficult to deal with here for Vortex. Because he's going to be fighting uphill against his opponent. We take a look from his perspective and you can see just how little line of sight he's got uh, fighting into this military. But huge mass coming out for his opponent. 140 versus 131 population here. Both players pretty even when it comes to this fight. Both of the battering rams going to be going down as well. Litacor, who's looking better at this point in time? I think Lordix is looking better because he's barely losing any army and he's slowly grinding down those numbers. Mangonel is not coming out though, and one or two good Mangonel shots could just destroy the entire army of Vortex. He needs a couple of crossbowmen here ASAP to deal with those men at arms. Yeah, he's doing a pretty decent job of getting in behind here. The men at arms are going to be doing their best to try and take those out. Springwood's going to be going down here. Mangonel's on the back line as well, did go down. You can see the bundle of sticks just laying down there, but it definitely seems like Vortex is holding on. Villagers also going to get pushed over towards that right hand side. Doesn't want to lose any of those. And Springle's now going to begin focusing down the battering rams. And uh, Nesta B is just doing an incredible job here of holding on. The Barbican of the Sun still manages to survive. A couple of uh, palace guards hiding out inside as well. And it really looks like Vortex is doing incredibly well here. He's still managing just to keep all three of these Nesta Bs alive. And it looks like the Muslim is going to get pushed back as Vortex's army numbers really begin to build up at this point in time. 
Agnes is one of the best defensive civilizations in the game, partly because of the supervisability of the officers. So, if you're actually supervising those barracks, you have a very, very easy time reinforcing the battlefield, and that's what we saw here from Vortex. It was a difficult time for the Muslim to bring in reinforcements, especially once these mangonels were sniped by the Springholds, whereas for Vortex, he was just able to constantly flood in those palace guards. He started that fight with like four, and now he's got uh, around 10, 11 on the battlefield, and he lost quite a few of them, so the quality of those mad arms will be better for Muslim, of course, with uh, the extra clad armor, but reinforcing the battle was much easier for Vortex, so that's why the Muslim lost that battle. Still, if he plays the gold control game, he could have a decent advantage here, because right now Vortex is starving for gold. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% right. Uh, I, I think one of the curious decisions is the fact that he went for, the Muslim went for Mangonels instead of going for Springholds. I feel like Springholds here would have been incredibly strong. If he'd gotten about uh, four Springholds out, that would have enabled him uh, the ability to one-shot the uh, the, net, well, the nest of bees, rather. Um, and that's all he really cares about. So ideally, you know, just going for full men at arms, diving in there, get the Springholds in on the back line, focusing down those nest of bees, and really start to, to do a lot of damage. I think he would have been absolutely fine. So it's curious to see that he went for the Mangonel route, because obviously going up against the, the Chinese composition, there's going to be a lot more siege in there. But uh, we'll look to see how he plays out in the mid game. Um, earlier, I mentioned those percentages. It looks like that 2% obviously went down or, or, or increased up. But uh, China is looking incredible at this point in time. And Vortex demonstrating uh, why casters are obviously uh, not just overhyped, but probably overpaid as well, I would say, Lidicor. Because that 2%, he's m magically turned it from 2% into what now looks to be about a 95% chance for him to win. You did mention the hills in the middle of the map, and those are actually pretty impactful here for the Muslim. If you just look at his line of sight, he's got a very, very good vision on the opponent's army. Before he lost that starting tower, he even saw the gold mine. So he knows exactly when Vortex is moving out of his ways. He knew where Vortex moved up on that gold mine. So that hill under his control is pretty massive. He also has a wall up north, although he hasn't gotten that sacred site also walled off the left side of his base. Looking at the Ecos real quickly, it's 87 versus 101, so Vortex still has a pretty confident lead. Yeah, yeah, he's looking pretty decent. Palace Guard's now going to be coming out. Mangonel's getting some pretty decent shots off there. Great splits coming out from Vortex as he begins to open fire on his opponent. Springles beginning to move through the mass. Double Springles actually going to be coming out, firing off each at against each other. Point blank range. This is the consequence of those hills that we mentioned, Lidicor. You can see just how much difficulty the Springles are having as the Mangonels actually can fire over the uh, the terrain, whereas the Springles actually have to get up to point blank range to try and get a, a decent position there. All the Springles from Vortex going to be going down and the majority of the siege here from Vortex has gone down, unfortunately. This is just making this battle longer and longer, and I feel like once we get into a very long battle, that's something that the Chinese will love to be in. So Vortex doesn't really, doesn't really need to push out that much over here. All he needs to do is just make sure he doesn't lose that gold, though, because the biggest problem, I think, for Vortex is that he sort of surrendered like 80% of the map to his opponent. Yeah, that's a really difficult spot for him. And speaking of surrendering, it looks like the gold vein going to be surrendered over as well. So Vortex managing to isolate his opponent. We'll have to see if he manages to catch on over towards the uh, the east of the map where there are remaining gold mines. And of course, over down to the south of the map where there is a large gold vein. But going to continue to apply pressure towards the front. We see another battering ram going to be coming down. The Muslim looking pretty decent here. 96 villagers compared to his opponent who's on 107. So managing to keep up with the village account despite the Song Dynasty difference. And, uh, yeah, you got to say at this point, I mean, it's still anybody's game at this point. Obviously, the longer the game goes on, Lidicor, the more likely China will win. Uh, but uh, I tell you what, Vortex is looking incredible. Vortex needs gold. That gold mine is almost out. He needs to expand either to the right side or the left side with the gold. Because even if he can finish that gold mine, it's going to be just without gold, but I'm not even sure if he can finish it because there's a big push coming in. Yeah, huge push coming in now. Look at the beautiful setup right now coming out from De Muslim as well. He's got mangonels on all sides of the map. Springles at the top as well, going to be firing down upon this. He's got to be careful. Those men at arms are coming out here as well. Villagers trying their best to fall back. You see that he's actually going to be able to clean up this gold mine on the front line. Men at arms, they're firing the wrong unit. They need to be focusing down on these nest of bees. All of those men at arms go down. He's only got a handful of them left. He, he went down from about 15 men at arms down about three in the matter of seconds and uh, gonna be able to push in here 
Vortex trying his best to hold on. Got a lot of siege sitting behind this Barbican. Villager's going to be cleaning this up. Oh, he's got to be careful. Mangonel shot. Mangonel shot on the villagers. Oh, whoa. It's absolutely huge. Oh, he's just lost about 10 villagers to that Mangonel shot. That was massive over there for the Muslim because even though he won't take down the Barbican of the Sun over here, the key thing is that just he's cutting into that villager deficit that he has had. Those nest of bees are just decimating those longbows now, though, so he's got to be careful with this. Yeah, keep in mind, this is part of the reason why uh, on this map, English is so strong because they get to fight downhill the entire time their opponent has got to fight uphill. It's a constant battle. You never know where your enemy siege is going to be. You don't have line of sight onto the enemy siege, and as a result, they're always going to get their first shots off with regard to spring orts, mangonels, whatever it is. And on top of that, there's stealth forest that you've got to be dealing with, and the mass right now from the Muslim is looking incredible. The thing here is that, uh, of course, Vortex is holding this one, but behind this one, if you look at Vortex, he's got zero gold income, so replenishing those palace guards will be difficult, and his eco is just getting pushed so many idle villagers, whereas the Muslim's economy is completely untouched for the last 20 minutes. Yeah, it's it's been an incredible push right here. A lot of palace guards now going to be coming out. Vortex is aiming down that mangonel. He's going to be trying to get it back. You managed to see... He does actually lose it. The Springwood's going to be sealing the deal over there as he continues pushing back, managing to secure up that gold again. 24 villagers out here. Is there any Manganel coming in? It doesn't look like it. But uh, the Muslim looking incredibly strong. Needs to get these Springwood emplacements on these outposts. I'd love to see that from him. He's got to be careful here. He's losing another Springwood on the front line. Not, or uh, rather, Manganel on the front line. But uh, yeah, that one's going to be not, not too long for this world, it seems. The Muslim needs to start adding some crossbows in here or just more of his own mana tarns because he's meeting a lot more palace guards. It's almost exclusively palace guards now for Vortex. Vortex was able to secure the front of his base once again, but at the end of the day, he's down to 94 vills. His opponent is at 106 now, and I feel like if the Muslim started capturing those sacred sites, he could just force Vortex to make a move a lot easier. Currently, Vortex needs to move to the far right, wall off uh, that side and take that small gold mine, but... In the long run, he needs that big gold on the left side that he's just moving out towards. Yeah, he's got that gold vein down there. Uh, if the Muslim was to castle drop that, I really don't know how Vortex could even respond to it. He just wouldn't have the siege for it. I mean, he could market trade to trebuchets potentially, but he wouldn't be getting up to the next stage. And then obviously there's another gold vein up towards the north. But uh, villagers going to be taking out that scout of Vortexes, so he's going to have absolutely no idea about what is happening behind this. But uh, Vortex is going to be, or rather, uh, the Muslim is going to be moving out towards his third gold mine for the game. What I would love to see from the Muslim is sending a couple of longbows uh, to both gold mines, because mm. he knows exactly that his opponent is out of gold. He saw those villagers desperately scrambling for that gold mine, so he should know that, hey, my opponent is going for a very exposed gold mine over here. That means that he pretty much has no gold income from additional gold mines. So that should be a signal for the Muslim that he should try to probe these uh, gold mines on the sides. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's sending men at arms to the left. They'll be just a little too late, I do believe, because the villagers should be able to finish those walls in time. Yeah, once they get those walls up, though, they're going to have a bit of a difficult time because obviously there's going to be uh, men at arms pushing through there very shortly. Longbow's got to be careful in the middle. Keep in mind the... Uh the the uh, the palace guards have got that much faster speed and look at the mass that's beginning to build right now for vortex as well he's got four nest of bees that are out four sprinkles i'd love to see from the muslim uh, just a whole bunch of sprinkles I, I would love to see like 10 10 you know nine ten sprinkles just constantly coming out he's got three siege workshops here so it's not out of the question but uh yeah definitely the right choice Manatar is uh, coming in on the left side. As I said, the Vos will be finished in time, most likely. But they will probably be able to break through. Are the Vos going to be finished? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Should no be just in time. Yeah, but the, the issue is that, I mean, he's going to be able to heal this wall up as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, going to be trying his best to uh, to get through this one. But now towards the middle of the map, it looks like the Manganels are going to be trying their best to fire off. Springle's going to be able to get a pretty decent angle here. And the Muslim going to have to get forced back from this position. All of the palace guards are in here. It doesn't look like there's enough crossbows mixed in, at least not yet. Uh, there are more coming out. We can see they're beginning to trickle in. We've got four crossbows now slowly coming in for the Muslim, but going to be forced back. It looks like the Palace Guards are going to be able to get in on top. There's not a lot of units here to prevent it. Lytical, this could be a good game. 
This could be, because all those longbows are being forced back, just lack of crossbowmen hurts badly. And the moment the longbows turn back to shoot, those nest of bees will pursue them. The gold mine on the left side has been destroyed, but those men at arms are just missing from the battlefield so much over here. Yeah, it really, really hurts. And you can see right now why the, this Chinese composition is notorious. And the Muslim is looking like he might be in trouble. The percentage meter continues to rise. We mentioned earlier in this game that there was a 2% chance of the Muslim losing this game. It now looks like he's got a 2% chance of winning and it's slowly getting lessened and lessened. Even down to 1% now, Litacore. This scale, I don't know exactly how it works, but I tell you what, it's starting to look worrying for the Muslim. It's looking really, really grim. And really, if all of those mad arms are on the battlefield, this could have been a slightly different fight because that is exactly the buffer that the Muslim was missing. He went in for a raid and I don't even blame him for it. But the problem here was that that was actually missed time on the grand scheme of things. He's pulling all the villagers to try and force the siege back. He actually will be able to secure some ground, but I feel like all that pressure and all that damage done to Vortex's base is now nullified. If that nest of beast kills like 20 vills here, it's over probably. Yeah, that's a little war. You get some nice little splits there, but he's still going to be able to take out some villagers on the back line. It looks like two of them do go down. But uh, yeah, the Muslim manages to clean up a fair few villages here, but you sort of got to wonder whether it was worth it. Um, yeah, geez, this is tough. He's on 112 villages, so a lot of them managed to, to survive. 104 for his opponent in Vortex. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he manages to hold for the moment and going for a little bit of a curious forward mill. Have you ever seen this before? Trying to look for that. Where is... Where is it's uh, forward mill? the forward mill. It's like in front of the Barbican. He's got plenty of space back oh, okay. here. Uh, you know, th there's a beautiful spot between these two stone mines that's got a just a single wall there. But uh, he's d he's decided to go for this front wall. But now it looks like the Muslim is going to continue pushing out. Look at the men at arms actually getting in on the back line. This could be bad for Bo Vortex right now. He's going to be losing the majority of his forces right now. The Muslim actually pushing in. All the nest of bees have gone down. A single one remains. There's men at arms rampaging through. And this is exactly what I talked about earlier, Lidicor. I said that Vortex had to be careful of this push. When the men at arms really start throwing around their Chad armor, they are the absolute Chads in town. you got to lock your wife up, lock your daughters up, lock everybody up because these guys will still your family and it looks like he's actually tapped out vortex is tapped out there it is that's the two percent baby that's the two percent what a game and really it just was so so hard to call because two minutes ago it felt like vortex is just going to steamroll the entire base of the muslim but this is where the crossbows and men at arms started to hit the battlefield Three minutes ago, we didn't have any crossbows on the field, and that was the missing ingredient for the Muslim, because the men at arms are great at absorbing the damage, but the real damage dealing unit you have is the crossbows. They just melt those palace guards. And also, on the left side, we had all those gold miners cleaned up. Vortex was struggling for gold control for a long, long time in this game, and... Once that gold mine got cleaned up, all of his palace guards go down. It was just next to impossible to replenish it. Yeah, that's exactly it. It all, it, it all just came down to gold control. It was incredible stuff to see. I mean, these guys played absolutely out of their minds. So many swings, so many turns. But still, you know, the Muslim really demonstrating his prowess on that map. So incredibly well played. The villagers doing a great job there. We mentioned, you know, that if those villagers did go down, it would probably be a good game. But he managed to retain a lot of them, kept it the mass of his army there as well, and subsequently was just able to, to, to take the game. Absolutely ludicrous play. I can't believe that. What yeah, a game, like this game had at least five swings because both sides were losing tremendous numbers. If you look at the military graph, there was at least four moments in this game where it was like, okay, one player just lost his entire army and is about to get steamrolled. But in the end, I feel like the thing that it came down to was that the Muslims unit composition was just uh, better suited for this one final battle. Yep. The men at arms and the crossbowmen. And really, those crossbows were the difference maker. Like... At the 25, 30 minute mark, we barely had any crossbows. It was mostly longbows. And the moment mus the Muslim started to add some crossbows, that's where the battle started to swing in his favor because he had to realize that the longbows were doing absolutely nothing for him. Yeah, I got to agree with you 100%. Uh, yeah, it, it was absolutely ludicrous. Uh, all right, well, if you're watching this one on YouTube, I'm going to leave a link in the description over to Lidicor. Lidicor, it's been a pleasure casting with you. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to the third game. I don't know about you, but I reckon it's going to be an absolute banger. It's going to be an absolute banger, and I'm honestly unsure how to call these games now, because you see, there are so many swings back and forth, and obviously as a caster, you're just like, okay, this got to be game. But then, he just pulls a, I'm not saying miracle comeback, but 
when that push came in and uh, the Muslim had to pull like 30 villagers, the villagers were being fired upon by nest of bees. It seemed like the next volley of the nest of bees will kill like 25 villagers and palace guards were still streaming in. But then the villager pull actually worked out because the siege went down and simultaneously that push with the men at arms on the left side paid off because the gold was just uh, disappearing from Vortex. Yeah, yeah, it was absolute crazy.